So as we get into castings, one of the things that you have to um, remember that one of the things that's taking over for castings is 3D printing, right? Well, as far as uh, making the first part. We'll, we'll show you some of them here in a little bit. Let's get into the notes real quick. The casting of metals. There's a pattern just the shape of what is going to be casted. That's usually going to end up being a prototype type thing, right? Because you're going to make one, in order to make one, the original is the hardest thing to make, right? You look at something like this ram head. People that know how to draw in SolidWorks, how easy is that to draw in SolidWorks? <laughs> Pretty hard, right? Somebody had to make this the first time for the company they like to call a Dodge, right? This is not so bad. I just grabbed a couple of castings that we had out there that were on next to the 3D printer. There was very few, I was surprised. But you gotta make the pattern before you can cast the actual metal. You have a mold. This is what forms the pattern. And it must withstand the heat of the molten metal. Obviously, right? Just pour a liquid metal into something, it's going to have to be a material, it's, it's aluminum, it's going to have to be able to stand at least like 2,000 degrees, and steel will be over 3,000. So different methods. Of casting. The first thing you've heard me talk about a little bit here was gonna be sand and casting, right? And there's different types of sand castings. Sand works good because it resists that heat, right? It's also good for slow cooling. You'll see in fab shops, they'll have a, a bin full of sand where they cool parts. They put it in there and it holds the heat right there. So it slows really slowly. First is green, sand, Molding. Consists of moist sand with small amounts of clay and other substances. Green refers to the moisture content. the word green sand moly what does green mean you right it refers to the moisture content what does green stand for the moisture content right it 
dry sand molding. Uses a resin. Bond to mix with the sand. It is by far the most used for castings. A potential test question. Which casting? is used for the for the most castings. I guess which casting process? I knew it right. Dry sand molding, right? If you wanted to get it right. If you want to get it wrong, you can write whatever you want. All kinds of crazy stuff. There's three different kinds of dry sand molding. Core, sand molding, so the inside of the actual casting is going to be the sand, you're going to form it around it. Shell molding. So we have the outside of it, you pour it in. And then vacuum. Great mysteries of the world is why does vacuum have two U's in it? Nobody knows. Why do they ask for your zip code when you have radio check buying batteries? Nobody knows. Two of the greatest mysteries of life. Chemically bonded sand molding. That's the last under sand molding. So technically that should be over one more. No, I don't do that. It's doing stuff for me, I don't want to. Oh, there we go. Centrifugal castings. There's a core one right there. There's a good one. So they split that open. Comes together like a book. That's the pipe that pours stuff in. It's like they're making a hammer or something. 
There's your parts. Centrifugal castings is a process in which molten metal is poured into a rapidly rotating mold. Think of rotation, you're thinking of round, right? So round parts. So that's going to be wheels, comma tubing, and pipe. Lost it, lost it. Are produced through this process. Potential test question would be what type of casting produces wheels to be in pipe? Right? Centrifugal, think of that, round parts, spinning. I don't know, I'm kind of curious to see what we'll get on a Google search. Centrifugal cast. Those are the cartoons, there's the pipes. Cast iron pipes, very common, right? The problem with cast iron pipes is they can't take an impact, right? Cast iron is hard and brittle, and I used to have one out there, I got rid of it because somebody tried to weld it, bad news. And you cut a piece of that, let's say it's two inches, you hit it with a hammer, it shatters like glass, so. Cast iron, not, cast, not all cast iron, but some of it's been replaced with um, plastic tubing, right? The big giant plastic tubing. Even, even the galvanized stuff isn't around very much anymore. It's all that plastic tubing. Investment castings. AKA lost wax. Commonly referred to as lost wax. Potential test question. What type of casting is commonly referred to as lost wax? And you would write investment castings, right? This is one of the oldest methods of casting. Guess what it uses? Anybody? Wax. Wax. There you go. Are usually cast in metal molds. Or by injection molding. Injection molding.
thought you were thinking like I, I might have mentioned this last class that injection molding is a very common thing for plastics, right? So uh, a lot of people think of injection molding as just plastics because they can't picture you know metal being injection molded, but there's a lot of processes for injection molding as well. I'm not going to make it into the first class. I don't know who that is. How rude of me to look at that. That'll never happen again, I swear. Solid investment castings. So they make solid investment castings, just like the sand. And they also have the shell investment. that again is being poured around something than being poured in something, right? Why not? Let's see what we see. It's just going to be another cartoon. Oh, a lot of this. They all look the same in the parts. I remember this now. Pattern is wax, ceramic pouring cup, central screw or wax bar. Pretty simple. Gasking is a pretty simple process, really. Ways 3D printing helps with investment castings. I don't know if they, if they can burn out 3D printed parts or what. If you think about this, if you made this in a mold and just left it in there, you could probably pour it in and have it burn out. I don't know if they do that or not. Because they're talking about the wax, like the wax is going to come out, right? This has probably got a pretty decent burning temperature. I don't know. You can start a fire and see. Liquefy it. The next one is permanent molding. Cavity. Graphite and other refractory materials are sometimes used for steel castings. Oh, this one's shutting off. 
That's all right. The molds are then machined into rough shape and hand finished. them and do a hand finish. The mold must be heated to 700 degrees. Fahrenheit to have a high quality gasoline. If you think about it being ambient temperature, so 70 degrees, if the mold was 70 degrees and you poured liquid hot uh, metal into it, it's going to freeze a lot faster than it was 700 degrees, right? Causing it to have voids, most likely. Permanent molding is a step between sand casting and die casting. That's a test question. Which type of casting is a step between sand and dye? Did you think proved it? <clears throat> Last but not least, we're going to go dye casting. <coughs> Everybody's gotten the, the little the cars when they were a kid. They all say, well, I'm about die cast, right? Differs from permanent molding. Sand casting and that the metal is not poured into the mold, but is injected under high pressures. From 1,000 to 100,000 PSI. PSI stands for pounds per square inch. If you don't know that, that's real bad. You probably want to hide that. I'm just kidding. If you don't know, you don't know. Two basic systems. Hot chamber. Usually Shut off too. 
Yeah, this one just finally showed up. The cook breaks. Is that cook? Yeah. Oh, it's got 42 minutes left. Let's see if I'm walking in here. I can't have a student on camera. As usually, <laughs> casting zinc. Tin, lead, and low lost it melting alloys. I should have just ran a power cord over those though. <laughs> Hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Coal chamber. Copper-based alloys and other high melting point alloys. Oops. Now you don't usually think of aluminum and magnesium copper as a high melting point, but if you're preparing it. To tin, I think the only temperature of tin. Let's look up the exact melting temperature. Yeah, it's 449.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Go around. Everybody's telling me. So 449 degrees Fahrenheit is a low melting temperature, right? Compared to aluminum, I don't. I want to say 1666 for some reason. Twelve. Or is it twelve? Twelve. It was one of the two. Sixteen is the upper critical temperature rate, I think, for steel to rearrange the. So 12 to 1300, somewhere around there, depending on what it's alloyed with. Steel, upper, critical. There we go. Well, I was way off on that. Well, it says 1600 to 2300. Three hundred is just about melting, so that's. Maybe not steel is. You don't know the steel melting temperature. I'm gonna go twenty eight hundred. What do you think? It says twenty five to twenty eight. This was the true melting temperature of steel, A like A36. Yeah, the melting temperature all varies on what it's alloyed with, because none of this stuff is pure, right? Well, I mean, you can look up the pure melting temperatures, but that's not really useful, and they usually alloy it with something. Metals usually exist very um, poorly by themselves. They're missing something, whether it's mechanical or, or whatever. So when they say high melting temperature, they're comparing it to these really low melting temperatures. Those are all real low. This 
this is a bullet under die casting. I don't know where that my spacing is. That's what you're doing in your notes. So die casting machines are generally heavy and massive. Maybe they're injecting metal, so it's going to take a little mass. Usually hydraulically operated. What's hydraulics? Snoop Dogg's car. <laughs> well, it does have hydraulics in it. That's what they hit it, I guess. Fluid power, right? Fluid, po fluid power is good stuff, right? And we have a blow hydraulic hose. It's always exciting, right? Fluid power is extremely strong. I guess you compare it to pneumatics, which means air, air power. That's relatively low, right? Capable of exerting the hundreds of tons of force needed to hold the diabs together. high pressure is needed to keep the molten metal from leaking <coughs> at the parting line. Now we're going to go to 72 quiz. Next class. Exclamation point. So now I'm going to show you a video if I can find it. I saw it uh, last year. Hopefully it's still on there. And it's just going to be a very basic show you how to do the casting process. So we're going to watch that next and then uh, I'll show you these 3D printed parts and we'll, uh, we'll be done.